All right. So today we're diving into some pretty bold territory. Mm -hmm. uh, we're tackling nomad capitalist Andrew Henderson. Okay. And his views on what we owe. Yeah. Or maybe more importantly, what we don't owe to our home countries. I like it. So uh, are you ready to unpack this? Absolutely. This video really gets into like those fundamental beliefs yeah. about patriotism and success right. and how those might work together or yeah. totally clash. Totally. Yeah. And Henderson seems to be someone who likes to clash. A little bit. Yeah. Head on with those ideas. Head on for sure. So right away he jumps into this whole nomad capitalist thing mm -hmm. and he doesn't just use it like a catchy title. Right. He really sees this entrepreneurial drive yeah. as almost like a primal urge. It's true. You know, like bigger than just chasing a paycheck. It's funny. He almost makes it sound like just going after money is kind yeah. of meaningless. Yeah, like a distraction. Totally a distraction, especially for those obsessed with those status symbols. Right, right. Like yeah. the yachts, the sports teams. All that, yeah. He's over it. Yeah, he really positions himself as this global citizen building businesses to empower people. Yeah. Not just within one country, but across borders. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting how he frames it. Yeah. Like, he's not just talking. He actually uses his own company as an example. Yeah, he puts it into practice. Right. He talks about how he's created opportunities for people from all over. Yeah, he lists off these countries like Pakistan, Georgia, Venezuela. Places where it might be harder to get a leg up. Right, exactly. And that's where his argument really challenges, like, the conventional wisdom. It's like he's saying, forget where you were born. What matters is talent and hard work. It's a global meritocracy he's after. Absolutely. Where the best rise to the top, regardless of where they're from. Exactly. The cream rises to the top. But then he takes it a step further. Okay. And starts critiquing how even some charitable efforts are missing the mark. Interesting. He'd rather see a more hands-on, direct approach to solving problems. Okay. Instead of just throwing money at them. Interesting. Yeah. I see what you're saying. And you see this thread throughout his whole argument. Okay. This need to be in control. Mm -hmm. Whether it's your business, your giving, or even your relationship with your own control. Right. And that leads us to... Which brings us to the part where I think yeah. a lot of listeners might start to... Get a little... Yeah, raise an eyebrow. <laughs> yeah. His views on taxes. All right, let's go there. He does not hold back. Okay. He practically calls it highway robbery. Wow. He's not even just questioning the amount we pay. Right. He's challenging this whole idea okay. that we owe anything once we've left. Interesting. He makes a comparison to being stuck in like okay. an endless subscription service. I've been there. Yeah. You can't get out of even though you've moved yeah. to a whole different country. I got you. So it's a very, I mean, that's a very libertarian perspective. It is. He'd rather see a system where yes. you just pay for what you use. Exactly. He's all about... User fees. User fees for everything. For roads, for health care. Right, like an itemized bill from the government. Yeah. And it's not even just about dodging taxes for him. No, it's deep. He's questioning the whole system. Right, like does this even work? Where does the money actually go? Yeah, where does it go? He uses the national debt as an example. Okay. Like if you're just starting your career. Right. Are you paying for stuff from decades ago? Interesting. Or are you funding whatever the government's spending money on right now? It makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, it really makes you think about where it all goes. It really does. It really makes you think about the whole thing. Yeah, like, are we getting what we pay for? Right. And he, he doesn't stop there. No, he keeps going. He goes after this idea that expats oh, yeah. owe some kind of debt this guilt trip. Like we're betraying our countries yeah, by exact. looking for opportunities elsewhere. It's like, how dare you try to improve your life? Right. And he's basically saying, if your home country isn't holding up its end of the bargain. Yeah. Why should you feel obligated to stay? Right. Especially if you feel like you're being taken advantage of. Yeah. And he points out this kind of double standard. Oh, tell me more about this. Like we celebrate immigrants who come to say, America. Okay. Achieve the American dream. Right. The classic narrative. But then criticize people who leave their own countries. Interesting. So it's only okay if they come here. For the same reasons. But not okay if they go somewhere else. Yeah. Like you can't pick and choose. Exactly. When ambition is a good thing. Right. It's about freedom of choice, isn't it? It's this idea of like design your own life that he keeps coming back to. He does seem to have a problem with people who criticize his choices. He calls them out. He does. The haters, as he says. 
Yeah. And he thinks they're just mad because they haven't figured out how to break free. To escape the matrix. From those expectations. Yeah. It's definitely a pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of message. Totally. Like, if he can achieve this level of freedom and success. Anyone can. Right. But then it makes you wonder how much of that depends on his circumstances. That's the question, isn't it? Like, not everyone has the resources. Exactly. To just pick up and become a global citizen. Yeah, even if they wanted to. Right. But to his credit, he does admit that this nomad capitalist lifestyle okay. is only possible because of his financial success. Right. But he also seems to really believe yeah. that anyone can achieve that level of freedom. He's big on mindset. It's about having the right mindset and putting in the work. And he talks about how his company helps people okay. build businesses, create those opportunities. No matter where they're from. Exactly. So it's not just him saying, look at me, I made it. It's more than that. He's trying to provide a blueprint. A roadmap to success. And that's an interesting part of this whole thing. Yeah, I agree. It's not just a personal philosophy for him. It's bigger. He's creating a community. Interesting, like a movement. Connecting with entrepreneurs, investors. Digital nomads, the whole nine yards. All over the world. A global network. So he's built this whole network. Yeah, a global network of like-minded people. Who buy into this nomad capitalist way of life. It's more than just business. It's a whole philosophy. Right. And even if you're not trying to launch some big international company. Yeah. He's still tapping into this desire for more freedom. Oh, absolutely. More flexibility in how we work and live. He talks about how those traditional status symbols. Yeah, the house, the car. Don't really do it for him anymore. He'd rather have the experiences. The experiences, the travel, the connection. Trying people from different cultures, that kind of thing. Exactly. Like he's redefined success yeah. on his own terms. It makes you wonder though. What's that? Is this just a trend among a certain group? You mean like the wealthy entrepreneurs? Yeah. Or is this something bigger? Like a societal shift. Are more people starting to question that old definition of success? The climb the corporate ladder, buy a bunch of stuff kind of thing. Right. Is everyone secretly yearning for a little more nomad in their lives? It's an interesting question. Yeah. And I think it speaks to the anxieties of our time. How so? Well, the world is changing so fast. Yeah. Technology is breaking down barriers. People right. are starting to reevaluate what really matters. Like we're all reevaluating. Exactly. And maybe Henderson's message, even if it's a bit extreme, okay, it resonates with people who feel stuck. Or disillusioned. Yeah, like they want something different. Absolutely. And that's an important point. Even if you don't agree with everything he says. Oh, for sure. He makes you think. He's a provocateur. About those big questions. Right. Like, what are your priorities? What are you willing to sacrifice? <laughs> are you in the driver's seat of your own life? Exactly. And sometimes you need that push. A little nudge in a new direction. To really examine those assumptions. Right. And maybe Henderson's story inspires some people to take that leap. Yeah, to design their own path. Or maybe it makes others appreciate what they already have. It's all about perspective, right? Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive. Yeah. What's the one thing you hope our listeners take away from this? I think the biggest takeaway is simple. Okay, I like simple. Ask the hard questions. Okay. Everything. Your relationship with your home country. Okay. Your definition of success. How you want to contribute to the world. Don't be afraid to challenge the status quo. Exactly. Look at things from different angles. And ultimately, yeah. forge your own path. Love it. Grab the wheel and steer. Take control. And on that note, We'll leave you to ponder those big questions. Happy pondering. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Always a pleasure. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning. And keep pushing those boundaries. We'll see you next time.